from Century Tower on campus to KSP Stadium. A gorgeous day in Gainesville for the Sunshine Showdown Part 2. Oh, friends and neighbors and smiling faces around, at least until first pitch. And then it is game on for a clash of former national champions. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Gainesville. I'm Beth Mowens, along with two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith. These two programs, Smitty, always thinking about that next national championship, and they are trying to put the pedal to the metal down the home stretch here as we get closer to NCAA tournament time. Yeah, Beth, both these clubs very, very aggressive in the way that they play, very competitive. And, and, you know, when it comes down to this, this is about winning on your home field, but also bragging rights within the state of Florida. Each of these teams looking to try to punch that W tonight. Yeah, and one of the stars tonight, newly minted as a top 10 finalist for National Player of the Year honors, it's Skylar Wallace. And Beth, she's just been outstanding this year. Her power is to all field. 16 home runs on the year, a batting average over 450. How about this, a slug over 1,000. She can run, she hits with just so much energy and power. You can just see it, it just eludes from her. She plays a really good shortstop position. And look at her chasing that triple crown in the SEC. She leads in batting average, home runs, and runs batted in. Skylar Wallace is just a juggernaut on the offensive game front. And looking for some vengeance, they dropped the first game in uh, the uh, series with Florida State last week. You've got to deal with the Florida State offense. The number's impressive if you want to try and beat them. Absolutely impressive. This is a team that can hit for average, and they also love to swing that double. They're gap hitters. They can hit home runs, but it's really their ability to run over 100 stolen bases. This is a team that knows how to produce runs in many different ways. Had a really good April coming in at 16-1, and one. so this Florida State team, they know how to swing it. 15th start of the season for the right-hander out of Bainbridge, Georgia. It's Lexi Delbray, 7-2 and two on the year with a sub three ERA. Well, Delbury likes to work the ball north and south, so she'll go upstairs with that rise ball. She also has a very good changeup. She's gonna be in those mid 60s. The big key for Delbury is that she needs to limit the free passes, 46 of them on the year. Florida State lineup looks like this, a lot of speed, great eyes at the plate. They are amongst the country leaders in walks. And Janai Kerr, who has uh, not only added to her batting average this year, but the power numbers are up as well for Janai in that two spot behind Kaylee Mudge. It was a 5-3 win a week ago in Tallahassee for the Seminoles. They rallied for the W, and now the rematch here tonight. Knowles third in the country, Florida State ranked number 17. And Kaylee Mudge, the junior from Winter Springs, will start things off. Ground ball to second. Good backhand by Reagan Walsh over to first. One down. Florida State comes into this matchup, winners of their last eight games in a row. They have played one of the toughest schedules in the country. They come in 13 and six against ranked opponents. 19 of their 20 games against ranked foes this year have been away from home. The only one that was not was last week's win over Florida. <laughs> yeah. Their schedule has just been tough. Every top ACC opponent, they have been on the road and you know, Lonnie Alameda has uh, really challenged this group of athletes, uh, her pitching staff, uh, you name it. She's put them in uncomfortable positions because she knows in the postseason they're going to need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, they are set up very well to be a top eight seed for the NCAA tournament. 2-0 to Kerr. They do have some work to do. It is finals week in Tallahassee for... Lonnie Alameda's crew, and then Louisville comes to town over the weekend. The magic number to clinch the regular season championship is one. So one win away in their three-game series against Louisville, and they win the regular season crown as Kerr draws the walk and a one-out base runner. Here's a look at Tim Walton out his 18th season at Florida with a pair of national championships. The Gators went back-to-back -back 
in 2014 and 2015. First pitch swinging, popped up, Harding to Wallace at short, two down. As secure as Florida State is, uh, some work still to do for Florida. Right now, they are on the outside looking in in terms of getting a seed and staying home for the regional weekend. They will close out at Kentucky this coming weekend and then head to Arkansas for the SEC tournament as Michaela Edenfield steps in, number four in the order. Sophomore from Sneeds, Florida. Average may not be where she likes, but her hits have been timely. <laughs> I think that's most important at times. Yeah. Got some pop in her back. She uh, is a good run producer for Florida State. Well, that's what you want. You want those big hits showing up when people are on base or really key situational at-bats. She had two home runs in their weekend trip to Notre Dame. They just mashed the Irish, averaged 10 runs per game in the three-game sweep. Do one rise misses high. Help her being careful with Edenfield. First three pitches thrown to Michaela Edenfield. We're all off speeds. Comes back with that rise ball, tries to elevate her. Edenfield does not bite at it. And gets underneath that one. Falby out in center. Got it. A little walk, one left on for Florida State, and it's the Gators' turn. They pick up the bats when we come back. Lineup for Florida today it starts right at the top with Skylar Wallace. So that uh, batting average has always been good. The slug and the home run power she has added this season off the charts as uh, she pursues a triple crown in the SEC. Eccles and Walsh, the other two big bats at the top. Tim Walton hoping that the rest of that order starts to pick up the pace a bit, heading towards the end of the regular season and into the postseason. They will see the right-hander, Mac Leonard, in the circle today for Florida State. Uh, the senior 18 innings pitch, so not a ton on the year, but this is, again, those situations that Lonnie Alameda likes to put her pitchers in, give her a pressure start. She's going to be in the upper 60s. She likes to move the ball a little bit east and west with a screwball curveball. But it's really been a drop ball that she's developed over the last year and a half to really hammer that low half of the zone. She will elevate high. But the key for her today is just going to be work from ahead, use the defense, and uh, just get some time in that circle in case they need her down the road here in the postseason. Her longest outing of the season of four innings of work. So as we've seen a lot from Florida State over the course of the season, it has been an entire pitching staff. They all have a hand in it. Led, of course, by the All-America candidate, Kat Sandercock. As you see Lonnie Alameda in the background there, she will signal in the pitches. And uh, always a challenge when it's against Skylar Wallace. Look at the OPS, 1,600. <sighs> Crazy. <laughs> Eye popping. And, you know, I think the other thing that's amazing too, Beth, is that she has eight triples on the year. And... You know, in a smaller softball park, there just aren't a lot of triples unless you have incredible speed, and obviously Wallace has that. And quickly goes to three and O. Oh. The best batting average in the league, slug and triples, second in the SEC in on base and runs scored. She has a hit in 14 of her last 15. That batting average, by the way, 10th best in the country. And pitchers continue to be very careful with her. Leonard does find the corner. Skyler has walked 39 times, so that on-base percentage 
She's on board uh, six of ten times she comes to the plate. Yeah, it really is incredible. And when you do walk her with her speed and ability to steal bases, it's, it's almost like giving up a double. Now let's see if she does try and turn it into a double. She's 28 of 29 on the season in her stolen base attempts as she draws the leadoff walk. This is how the game started last week. She walked, stole base, ended up scoring in that first inning just to set the tone. Here you see a look at the, the left side in particular here for Florida State, a little different. Weisbrook is at short, Hartley is at third tonight as Lonnie Alameda has uh, moved some folks around as we told you, they've got finals this week. They've got a huge series in the ACC. They want to try and get Josie Muffley as healthy as yeah. possible for the stretch run. So they look a little differently on the left side of that infield. And Weisberg is playing way up the middle. Just going to open up that 5-6 hole. Looks like she will have the responsibility, Smitty, if Wallace tries to steal a cover in the bag because Flaherty is way over to the right side. Almost out of the outfield grass yeah, at second Flaherty. base. King right side. Probably going to situationally pitch. Ooh, Leonard lost it, and they won't even bother with a throw down. Wallace down to second on the wild pitch. You just held on to that a little too long sometimes. Uh, There's nowhere to hide out there in that circle in those moments, no. is there, Michelle? <laughs> there is not. There is not. You just got to, you just have to own that. <laughs> gotta laugh it <laughs> off. <laughs> exactly. You gotta be like, all right, well, that's over. On to the next. <laughs> Mac is now in her second year at Florida State after starring in Illinois State for three seasons. And uh, Charlotte Eccles at the plate for Florida. Terrific turnaround season for her. She was an All-American a couple of years ago. The numbers dipped last season, Smitty, and uh, right back on track so far this year for Charlotte. Yeah, absolutely. And look at that OPS over 1,100. Ten home runs. That power is back, as you mentioned, Beth. And, and I think most importantly, she's really doing a great job in that two spot protecting Wallace. Two of them together are just so difficult to get out. Well, and the responsibility for the top three in the order to keep it going, as you see, you know, the games and the at-bats, she's doubled her home runs, and yeah. she will uh, blow by her RBI total here in the next couple of weeks. Part of the reason the Gators have scored 346 runs on the year. RBI opportunity right here. The one-two pitch from Leonard, and Wallace will go ahead and take third. And they are 60 feet away from the lead. And this is just a tough situation for Mac Leonard. Just 18 innings coming into the year. And, you know, just not enough time to be really comfortable or precise. So this changeup is down in the dirt. Edenfield tries to block it and keep it in front. But even a pitch like that, as soon as Skyler Wallace reads it, you're not going to keep her from still on a base or moving up on a base or a wild pitch like that. 2-2 two -two to Eccles. Jammed her. I think Eccles swung at that to keep it from hitting her. That ball <laughs> really started <laughs> right in. Well, Tim Walton has talked, you know, it, it's, it's not the same Gator teams of old. Um, it, when you think of some dominating pitching and some huge bats, but he really loves the fight of this team. They have embraced kind of their identity, you know, by any means necessary. Get some runs in. That'll get to the right side, and you heard one of the fans yell, that'll work, and it does. <laughs> one nothing, Florida. Yeah, Eccles has been really good in situations with runners on base. And specifically in scoring position, she leads the team and hits with runners in scoring position. That one's not a hit. It doesn't get through, but it does the job. It scores Wallace, and they're on the board early again in this game. 
Well, and as a pitcher, those are the ones you hate to give up. That was a walk, a wild pitch, a wild pitch, and a ground out. Yeah. And a number up on the board for the Gators with one out. Here's Reagan Walsh. Four righties, five lefties in the batting order today for the Gators. Reagan from Southern California, where over the years the Gators have always found success on the recruiting trail. Reagan has been turning it on her last eight games, three home runs, nine runs batted in, including one off the Knolls a week ago. Modest four-game hitting streak for Reagan coming in tonight. Well, but that's so important because, you know, we talked about how Eccles really protects Wallace, but Walsh is protecting Eccles as well, and you've got to have that. You, you can't have your power hitters being pitched around, so with Walsh really starting to step up and hit for average and power, it just makes this lineup start to get longer, and that's one of the things Tim Walton talked about. You do a good job with four or five hitters. Uh, and then there's a slight bit of drop off. And he mentioned that, you know, if we can get a couple of those other hitters hot here in the postseason, he knows it's going to make a big difference moving forward. He knows postseason success. Yes. <laughs> uh, and probably surprised some people around the country last year as a 14 seed. They bounced the three seed Virginia Tech and the Supers. So he has a good formula to win late in the year. The ground out here for the second out of the inning to retire Walsh. But that's his, that's his hope that, uh, you know, they, they can get it together. Well, down the stretch here, he thinks they have the pieces. Well, part of that puzzle will be, you know, he knows they're going to pitch by committee, but if, if they can score, you know, six, seven runs a game, he, he thinks they have a chance to, to play with anybody out there. Emily Wilkie is your number four hitter. Six of their nine are hitting over 300. Obviously, Wallace over 400. Kendra Falby in the nine spot is just a smidge under 400. So you look at those two back to back when you roll over that lineup and you go Falby, Wallace, Eccles. A lot of speed and power. She leaves a vapor trail behind her when she runs. <laughs> it does. Maybe the fastest in the country. Yeah, and that's one thing, and, and Florida State has almost that same mentality that, you know, speed never slumps, and when you can get that speed on the bases, it's hard to defend. It's well, especially hard to in, pitch in around. Pressure, the pressure yeah. situations of the postseason, right? That's when it can really light you up. The 0-2 to Wilkie. Early lead for the Gators as they take advantage of a couple of wild pitches. Mac Leonard only had four all year coming in, and now two here in the inning. Eccles driving in Wallace. Wookie oh. snagged it short by Weisbrook. Solid defense for the Seminoles to steal a base hit. But the Gators do get on the board for the one nothing lead through one tonight in Gainesville. This was the scene last Wednesday in Tallahassee, an early lead for Florida State, and then Reagan Walsh goes deep. A 3-2 Gator lead, then Josie Muckley, a two-run double to grab the lead back for the Seminoles. They would go ahead 5-3, to three and Cat Sander clock uh, would shut it down. Another save for Cat and a 5-3 final. Knowles over the Gators. They've actually won the last four in a row, although the Gators still control the Sunshine Showdown 28-21 to 21 overall. This is the 50th meeting of these neighbors. Florida, the edge when they are hosting here in Gainesville, and they've got the one nothing lead. Lexi Delbray against five, six, and seven in the Florida State order as we move into the second inning. Mac Leonard. A couple points under 300 on the season for Mac with five home runs.
Well played by Wilkie at first, one down. It's always great, Smitty, to talk to the coaches and sort of, you know, pull back the curtain. Florida, it seems year in and year out, leads the SEC and often leads the country in fielding percentage. And, you know, asking Tim Walton, the numbers are a bit down, the, the percentages, the errors are a bit up. And it was just classic, he said, well, we're not striking as many people out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> More balls in play. <laughs> yeah. And hit harder like, oh, at You us. know what? That makes sense. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and sure yeah. enough, he was right. The strikeout numbers are down. That means the grounders and uh, fly balls are more frequent. A third less K's in the scorebook this year. So that can put a little more pressure on your D. Yeah, absolutely. And also the way the ball's getting hit at those defenders and you know the speed the exit velocity off of those bats and, and you know some of its positioning as well so there's a lot that goes into uh, those factors um, the walks as well you know when you're defensively paying behind pitchers that at times are struggling it, it's tough defensively it's a completely different rhythm you know there's a lot of up and down a lot of back and forth and you know pitchers that tend to hammer the zone a little bit more efficiently uh, you know, the defense behind them is it's just easier at times to be able to pick the ball, see the ball. 2-2 Two -two to Hallie Waycaser. Real pleasant surprise this year with more playing time for Florida State. Well, and you know what? The, the pitchers have a big opportunity ahead of them tonight with Kentucky to close out the regular season at the SEC tournament. You know, you come to places like Florida and Florida State because you want those challenges, mm -hmm. and they know they have to carry a, a you know a heavier load in the in the postseason if they're going to get back to Oklahoma City. As Waycaser draws the one-out walk. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, and those are the the things that when you start to really dig into the, the pitching staffs, it's the free passes we talked about it earlier. That's the 47th free pass of the year. So it's not just the walks, 30th walk of the year, but it's also 17 hit batters. And you know, that adds to the whip. It just makes it easier for your opponent to, to run an offense off of you when you're putting people on base. Dilbury gets a swing and a miss on Devin Flaherty, the second baseman in the seventh spot in the lineup. Devin has spent a lot of time at the top of the order as well this year. And a base hit. Puts a runner in scoring position. Two on with one out. As she rips one through the right side. So that'll bring up Bethany Keene, the senior from Bradenton, with an RBI opportunity. Two fifty nine hitter on the year. Five RBIs. We've seen her most often as a defensive replacement at first base, where she gets the start uh, today since Mac Leonard is in the circle. One forty three this year with runners in scoring position. Robert Guest, the home plate umpire. Scott Merritt first. Eric Salgado at third base tonight. Sarah Longley going to go out and have a little bit of a chat with Delbury. To get that off-speed pitch on the outer half of the plate. Sure, Longley's just talking about 3-0 pitch. Got to be careful in this situation. Obviously, you don't want to walk the bases loaded, but you also, uh, with runners in scoring position, don't want to put a 
Big fat pitch right down the middle of the plate. Fouls it off, three and two. A couple of nice pitches by Lexi Delbury. It's a big pitch here if she can get Keen. Avery Westbrook, the freshman. And just a little bit over 100. Definitely don't want to roll this lineup over. And that will load the bases with one out for the number nine hitter, Avery Weisbrook. Yeah, and that's a situation that, you know, it's always so hard, pitchers, getting that pickle when you fall behind. Trying to locate pitches, work from ahead. It just makes your job so much easier. And this is actually Christina Hartley. So they flipped not only Weisbrook from DP to short, but Hartley has moved into the nine spot in the batting order. And a conversation now out in the circle. Riley Trilicek has gone out to the bullpen to start to loosen up. With a bases loaded situation here in the top of the second for Florida State. With one out, Christina Hartley is the batter in the ninth spot in the lineup. Just her 25th at bat of the season. With one home run, six runs batted in. The infield is pulled in, looking for a play at the plate. And did that hit her? It did, and that will drive in the tying run here for Florida State. A single, two walks, and a hit batter. 18th hit batter of the year off of Delbury. Bases loaded. 2-1 count, she's trying to work that screwball in the inner half and it just really runs from that river into the battered box. Hartley does not have to get out of the way. Well, now you move back to the top of the order and Kaylee Mudge. It is a, a change of rule season, by the way, this coming off season. I know a lot of folks would like to see that rule change where you have to at least make an attempt to get out of the way. Make an attempt, yeah, I agree. If you're no standing matter. in the batter's box right now, you do not have to move. Correct, I, I, I would like to, Yeah. yes, absolutely, Beth. I think most people would like to see, no matter where that is, you have to make an attempt to move out of the way, not into the path of the ball. Mudge grounded out her first time and a base hit here. Scores Flaherty, Keen diving back into the base at third. 
and the RBI single for Kaylee Mudge gets FSU the lead. And that's why that rolling over the lineup was such an advantage for Florida State. Pitch on the inner half that Keely Mudge is just going to stay through. Foot down early, sees the ball, head nice and steady. And with the infield pulled in, that's just off the, the glove and out of the reach of Reagan Walsh. And another base knockout into right field. Keen comes home. As Janai Kerr gets the RBI, now they've got a couple players in a rundown. And back safe at third is Hartley, and now the tag applied for an out on Mudge. But Keen comes home to make it three to one. Kerr aggressive, getting that ball into the outfield. Bases loaded, just opportunities for the Seminoles, but that's a good job on that rundown for the defense. The Gators pick up that much needed second out, still runners at second and third. And here's Kaylee Harding. So two of the free passes in the inning, Waycaser and Keen, both come in to score as the top two hitters in the lineup, usually the table setters, uh, they are the run producers. RBI singles for Mudge and Kerr. And here come the big bats. Well, oh, Beth, when you look at Mudge and Kerr, that was the 33rd and 30th RBIs of the year for Mudge and Kerr, and that just tells me that the, the lower part of this Florida State lineup gets on base for them. And, Harding skies that out to center, fall be under it, and makes the catch. Three runs across for the Seminoles to grab the 3-1 lead to the bottom of the second. Here's a look at your ACC standings. Final weekend coming up, and the top two go head-to-head. -head. Florida State's magic number is one as they get set to host Louisville starting on Friday for the regular season ACC championship. The Knowles have won a regular season or tournament crown eight of the last nine years in the ACC. And then over in the SEC, still undecided as well. Tennessee and Georgia, the last two standing for the regular season title. But you go all the way down to Florida, all of those teams still in the mix for a top four seed, which would get them a bye in the SEC tournament. Of note for Florida at 10 and 11, they close out at Kentucky, and a Tim Walton Gator team has never finished below 500 in league play. So plenty uh, at stake for Florida as well as they get set to meet the Cats. Yeah, it's been one of those years <laughs> where anyone has been able to beat anybody. Five, six, and seven, which could also mean this is the final home game of the year for the Gators. So they need a strong finish to get into the conversation for a top 16 seed in the NCAA tournament. Otherwise, they would have to hit the road, which I think would also be the first time in yep. the Walton era. It's been, yeah, just a mainstay that they've always hosted a a regional they've always had one of those top 16 seeds so it, even last year i felt like it was a little weird seeing them on the road for a super regional yeah they have been so good for so long the two titles 11 times to the world series almost half of those they have been in the championship series And there's your run of SEC titles. They tied with Arkansas a couple of years ago for the regular season crown. That ended, by the way, a stretch of 13 years in a row where either Florida or Alabama won the regular season title. Arkansas shared 2021 and then won it outright last year. So the, the Gators and the uh, Tide have been the mainstays in the regular season, and then the SEC tournament, we'll just forget about it. That is an absolute <laughs> sorority free-for-all. Yeah, Seven different champs in the last 11 years. 
Tennessee has not had a uh, regular season championship. I think it's what, 07? Is that 07. Monica Abbott? Yeah. Yes. So that and then huge uh, for them. Georgia, I believe it's a uh, 2003 regular season championship. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's been a while, both those clubs at the top looking to try to get that regular season. And it's interesting that how much the, the coaches truly value that regular season yeah. championship. Good bounce back there for Mac Leonard. Gets the strikeout of Pal Egan, one down. Her first strikeout. Leonard, we talked about that drop ball that she really learned over the last year. It's just filthy when she can put that right at the knees and just get it to dive down. Tough pitch to handle. First strikeout of the game for Mac Leonard. Here's Sam Rowe, the designated player tonight. Sam, one of those 300 hitters in the lineup. And you know, Beth, you know, going back to that conversation between regular season versus the, the tournaments is that you know, a lot of the coaches, we talked about the, the value of the consistency to win that regular season, to be strong at home, but also so important on the road, be able to win series on the road Versus the tournament, which is kind of like, who's hot now and who are you playing and really what situation are you in? Because for some clubs, that tournament is so important to help yep. strengthen their resume for the postseason. Down in the dirt block by Edenfield. Yeah, Tennessee will close out at home against South Carolina and Georgia has LSU to end the regular season. Tennessee could clinch with a win and a Georgia loss. That series will get underway on Friday. We are already into the mayhem. Final. Weekend of the regular season. Ground ball to third. Hartley's there, two down. Hey, Major League Baseball will uh, come your way from the West Coast. Look at that Padre guy uh, checking on the score. I think it's 7-1 <laughs> tonight. Padres over the Reds as they get set to host the Los Angeles Dodgers Sunday night, 7 Eastern. Uh, that uh, rivalry has returned after the Padres eliminated the Dodgers last year in the postseason. All starts with uh, baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown at 6 Eastern. That drop ball from Leonard is uh, giving McKill <laughs> Edenfield a workout behind the oh, dish. Busy tonight. Mm -hmm. Here's Avery Gells. In the seventh spot in the order. And she's, uh, she's having some control issues here. And she's going to step away. Her teammates will come together to give her a little pep talk. A lot of times when you're a drop ball pitcher, you know, that hip angle is just so important. And if that hip is just slightly over rotated, your arm just brushes off and it, 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 it squirts the ball out of your hand, which is why you see a lot of those pitches that she's missing, missing toward that right-handed batter's box. And that's the key. If you really want to work on it, you start throwing that pitch low and inside, right? That's the, the drop ball that was so good against uh, Pal Egan to get the strikeout, right? It's on that inner half to the lefty versus working that arm side at the plate where your timing and your mechanics have to be perfect. I like that Coach Lonnie Alameda probably sees that. She's like, all right, we're going to come back inside when we need a, <laughs> when we need the strike. And so you can take a look where the way that her hip angle is just a little bit better on that inner half. She's got to keep those hips open and clear. And on that outer half or arm side, that hip angle is just a little bit over rotated. And that's why she's having those control issues. 2-2 two, two count to Gills.
comes off another. A little bit of an off speed out of the hand of Mac Leonard. Trying to mix things up. Pitch fouled off. Galani uh, signaling in the pitches. We, we see the spray charts now, Smitty, in, in both dugouts actually tonight in the background. So much analytical information at the fingertips of these coaches. Not only spray charts for hitters, but spray charts for pitchers as yes. well. One of the things there you see on the wall in the back there. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of that has to do positioning as well. So how are you throwing the hitters, but then defense where they're going to be setting up and as they continue to hammer y'all's back now on the inner half because that's just really where the uh the control is and there's a good look of all look at the floor yeah look. <laughs> tim's got a lot of info right there and, and that's for the players too they can go up and they can read how florida state pitches lefties versus righties all sorts of information tim's even got his tw notebook like attached to the side of the wall there with his super special info look at that there it is nice <laughs> i love it checking out the lineup card in there full count to gels who's been fighting off pitches left and right actually almost exclusively right <laughs> <laughs> As they've exactly. all been coming in on her hands. 11th pitch of the AB coming up. Numbers, kids, how, how many foul balls was it before you were called out? Well, I think our, our limit used to be four growing up. Yes, you only had right. four, four foul balls and then you're out. Exactly. <laughs> if you can't hit it between the white lines, come on. That's all right. Next person, grab a bat. Great at bat for Gells to draw the walk with two outs there on what the 13th pitch of the AB. The walk of the game given up by Mac Leonard. That'll bring up Sarah Longley in the eighth spot in the order. Senior from Royal Palm Beach. Showing her versatility this year after she was uh, spending some time at short, now behind the plate this season. And she's been very good behind the plate. Coach Walton talked about her batting average uh, being a little bit down, but he said it's all right, it's worth it because she's so strong defensively behind the, the plate for his pitchers, throwing out runners. Trying to respond immediately after Florida State scored three in the top half of the inning. Gators jumped in front with Eccles driving in Skyler Wallace back in the first. Got her to chase. So a walk, one left on, side retired, two complete. 3-1 FSU. Oh, they love their softball in the state of Florida. Saw a great crowd in Tallahassee last Wednesday night. Terrific crowd tonight in Gainesville. The Sunshine Showdown. I mean, really terrific for the fans, right, Smitty? To have this rivalry with uh, your neighbors, uh, an interconference type of situation. 
and you're challenging yourself amongst a team that year in and year out is in the top 20 and competing for the national championship as well. So a great test and a lot of fun for the fans. Absolutely. And, you know, I think the quality of good midweek matchups is important. Obviously, this one is uh, as good as it gets. And you look at the two national championships that Florida had in uh, 14 and 15 and Florida States in, in 18. I mean, it just shows how this game is always a battle and it truly is for bragging rights. I mean, these players, they know each other and mm -hmm. uh, being able to say that you, you, you won the series is important. Michaela Edenfield hammers one out to left and the lead off here in the top of the third. Four, five, and six do up for the Knowles. Nice swing by Edenfield. That'll bring up the pitcher, Mac Leonard. Oh, the first pitch swing fouls it off. Mac grounded back to the pitcher, her first time up in the second inning. He actually let off that three run inning. It featured three free passes. And that jumps over the glove of Wallace. Two on with nobody out. And that ball hit, bit, hit really hard at Skyler Wallace. She's playing in just a little bit. And you can just see the way that she approaches that ball a little bit differently. I think if she moves her feet and gets in front of it, maybe a little better opportunity to keep that in front of her. Score that a hit. Allie Waycaser takes a strike. One of those interesting. singles here gets Florida State a run scoring opportunity, Smitty. Yeah, and it, it's always interesting that the analytics. So, Edenfield coming up to that at bat, swings at the first pitch less than 24% of the time, but is aggressive. She goes out, hammers the first pitch she sees. Leonard also swinging early. Wake Caser as well, down 0-2, but you can just tell mindset for Florida State to come out and be aggressive early in the count. Delbury's got her here, 0-2. Called strike three in the punch out first of the day for Lexi, one down. 0-2 pitch, a good location. It's a rise ball in the upper half, and Wake Caser's just going to look at it. I think she thinks it's maybe inside, but that is well threaded. Good pitch by Delbury to pick up her first strikeout looking. Here's Devin Flaherty, singled and scored in the second. Five hits on the night for Florida State. Comes inside. Reno. Really good job by Devin Flaherty to be patient in this situation after <laughs> most of her teammates being aggressive early in the count, making sure she's getting a good pitch to hit. She's been good this year with runners in scoring position, just a smidge under 400. So Flaherty draws the walk. That is the fifth free pass. And the second inning in a row, they've loaded up the bases. We'll uh, chat with Lonnie Alameda coming up shortly. And so back-to-back -back hits for Edenfield Leonard and a walk here to Flaherty. And this time it's not the pitching coach coming out. Of, it's Tim Walton. And so a pitching change here for the Gators. 
Bases loaded with one out, and it looks like Riley Trilichik will be coming on when we come back. Well, as she's been doing often this season, Riley Trilicek will come out of the bullpen for the Gators, the senior left-hander, her 32nd appearance of the year. You had most of those in relief, Michelle. Yeah, she's more pitch to contact. She uses a curve on both sides of the plate, so she'll throw it back door or inside to the left-handed hitters and then run it away from the lefties as well. But she also can blend in that downward movement. I look for her to try to expand the zone east and west, but in a downward direction. She's inherited 20 runners, 11 have scored. It's her 22nd relief appearance. And she will inherit three more here with the bases loaded for Florida State. And a 3-1 Seminole lead here in the top of the third. Bethany Keene walked and scored in the second. And a chance to really bust this thing open. Infield will be pulled in, so Keen just looking to bash something hard, get it out on the green, try to get some of her teammates in. And Trilicek, she's just looking to hope to roll some ground balls that her infield can get to. Those are two for two with the bases loaded already tonight. RBI singles for Kaylee Mudge and Janai Kerr. One on one. is low two and one really good eye by Keen on that pitch it's easy to chase that fly ball out to left the catch is made by Gels not deep enough to advance the runners two down And that'll bring up Hartley, who was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded in the second inning to drive in a run. And now they'll go back to Avery Weisbrook. So they switch up the batting order in uh, the bottom two spots in the lineup. It was Hartley the first time, and now Weisbrook here. Good job of working from ahead in this pressure situation. <laughs> Missed it outside. This is just the 10th at bat of the season for Avery. And what a moment here mm. against Florida with the bases loaded. Two and two, that one misses in. Good curveball in the inner half. A lot of run on that pitch. Two, two, got her. 
Trilicek able to work out of the bases, loaded jam coming on in relief. Riley Trilicek, the left-handed pitcher using that curveball so effectively. Bases loaded, that eh, doesn't matter. I'm gonna strike him out and get out of it. Gator's picking up the bat. Back here in Gainesville, Florida State, the 3-1 lead over Florida as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Lonnie Alameda now on the mic with us and a, a big week for the Seminoles with finals going on. You, you're looking to win the ACC this weekend. You got a rivalry game tonight. How, how impressed are you with the way that your, your Seminoles have been handling all this? Yeah, I mean, any team goes through it, you know, so either you're not playing on the week or you have midweeks, but you got to handle um, getting your work done. I think it's the dead week to finals week, that two-week time of papers and studying. Um, but, you know, that's part of the joy of being a student athlete is the time management. So <laughs> we've been talking about this for a long time and being able to handle it this week. And so, yeah, really proud of them. We had a couple had to stay back home because they had finals today. And, you know, that's just the way it is. Hey, Coach, how big is this game, the in-state in rivalry between uh, two national championship programs? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's awesome. We talked about this before, like just for the state of Florida, um, you know, I think for us in the ACC, the SEC, like, you know, the conferences keep getting better. So, you know, girls from all over could want to play in any conference and, you know, achieve a high level of softball. And so um, this place is beautiful and we've done some great things to our environment to create like, you know, what they have in left field. You know, we have our decking out in our berm and they have those Adirondack chairs out there. It's just like a such a cool, casual environment, but high level softball. And so just really excited and it's a beautiful night and uh, it's been fun. Thank you very much, Lonnie. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Yeah. That's awesome. Seminoles took the first meeting in Tallahassee a week ago, and now they have the two-run advantage. There you see those Adirondack chairs. Get your feet up. Get a cold beverage. Beautiful night for softball in Gainesville. Hope to catch a home run over the fence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nine and in the top, Kendra Falby will lead things off, the sophomore from Odessa. Facing Mac Leonard. It's only the fourth time all year that Kendra's hit in the nine spot. Close to 400 average on the season. Even better when she's leading off an inning, as she does here with the base hit. And she'll pass the bat to the top of the order. And the tying run to the plate here in Skylar Wallace, the SEC's home run leader, as well as RBI leader coming up. That is the first hit of the ball game for the Gators. Wallace walked and scored in the first as she advanced a couple of bases on a pair of wild pitches and then scored on the Eccles ground out. <laughs> Top 10 finalists for National Player of the Year, along with Tennessee's Kiki Malloy and Ashley Rogers out of the SEC. Valerie Cagle, the representative for the ACC. And uh, you did hear me right. No Catherine Sandercock on that list. No Montana Fouts on that list. Of course, it's a very strong group with uh, three Sooners and a couple of UCLA Bruins making the short list and Sydney McKinney from Wichita State. Big time pitch by Mac Leonard. You can tell that Skyler Wallace She's a smart hitter knowing she's looking inside that Leonard's mostly been throwing strikes on the inside, ball on the outside. And you can see she even now backs off the plate looking for that inside pitch. Okay. Go back there. Pitch prior that she swung through was an off speed. Went in in the high 50s. Most of her harder stuff has been in the low 60s. Just good Just preparation. A, yeah. Fabulous season so far for Wallace. So smart, so competitive. Wants to win every pitch.
And Falby will go ahead and take second base, get into scoring position. Stolen base number 24 for Kendra. Full count to Skyler Wallace. Kim Walton talks about her plate discipline. She's always been able to hit for average, but really set to work, Smitty, to add the power this year and do what her coach says, do some do some more damage, which she has done this season as she fouls one off her foot. Yeah, she's just really been explosive. Her bat head velocity is off the charts. Her exit velocity, that ball off the bat, outstanding. Another 3-2 pitch. Sends another off. And you know, the other thing that's impressive, Beth, is that her home run, her, her power distribution, it's not like she's all pulled. She looks like it now because she's being pitched inside. She's very good at hitting the pitch that comes. So you throw her inside, she'll turn on it. You throw her outside, she'll wait on it, and she'll hit for power the opposite way. It's really incredible. Not a lot of holes in that swing, which is why she's got average and power. Swing and a miss. And a big strikeout for Mac Leonard. Just the 13th time all year that Wallace has gone down swinging. One away. Wallace trying to make adjustments is down off of the plate, but the key here is that Leonard actually throws that pitch to where Wallace is in the batter's box, not to the plate on a 3-2 count. That's probably ball four, but Mac Leonard, really good location, gets Wallace to swing through it. And Lonnie Alameda will come out to talk with her pitcher and the defense as Sharla Eccles comes up. Another left-hander. Nobody uh, warming up out in the bullpen right now. The Knowles have been very effective using seven different pitchers this year en route to their 43 and 8 record. Miss Lonnie likes to put them in all kinds of different situations, <laughs> throw them in the pressure cooker every once in a while. Absolutely. And that uh, Seminole pitching staff in the ACC, the best against opponents, batting average, the most saves as well. Most of those, Sandercock and McKenna Reed. And the three to one strikeout to walk ratio. Here's Eccles now with Falby out at second, tying run again at the plate. Carl grounded to second to drive a run in back in the first. Continue to hammer these left-handed hitters on that inner half. Eccles as well off the plate, expecting pitches on the inside corner. Those are 10th RBI, by the way, in the last seven games for Charla, that last time he came up. Been outstanding. Top 10 RBI hits, doubles. And that's what you want behind a hitter like Skyler Wallace. Those two. So tough. And you know, at times it has been Kendra Falby behind Wallace with all that speed in the one two spot, and then Eccles in the th three spot. So Tim Walton has a lot of flexibility the way he uses that speed. One two pitch coming. And it gets through Flaherty, and a run will score for Florida as Falby comes home. Eccles to second in what should have been the third out to end the uh, second out of the inning. Uh, 
I'm not sure if Flaherty just pulled her head up a little bit here, worrying about Falvey, but that ball just goes off of the glove and then she can't identify where it went. Off the heel of the glove and Falvey easily gonna score from second base. Something you don't see very often. So batted balls from Charlotte Eccles have driven in the two runs for Florida, and they uh, now have the tying run in scoring position for the number three hitter, Reagan Walsh, who hit a two-run home run a week ago in Tallahassee. In the first meeting between these two. Grounded out her first time up tonight. Leonard has a couple more innings under her belt. She's typically a little bit sharper. I'm sure that's why she's getting the, the call on this game. Edenfield couldn't glove it. And Eccles to third as Walsh draws the walk. So runners on the corners here with one out. Third walk of the game given up. Leonard. That'll be a walk and a pass ball. And it's Emily Wilkie lined out to short in the first. A terrific play by Weisbrook to snag it. Hartley is out there now at short. That is Weisbrook now back at short. Hartley is over at third defensively. Leonard trying to work out of the jam here. The Gators have the tying run at third base. And now control issues popping up. Yeah, she's been working from behind in this inning. Pitch count, 70th pitch coming here in the bottom of the third inning. Full count. Weisberg way up the middle, shortstop. They're going to have a play at the plate, and they've got Eccles jammed up, and she'll dive in safely at third as Edenfield never throws the ball to Hartley. And then Eccles may have been hurt on the collision.
Knuckles now on her feet. Looks like she'll stay in the game, but a defensive miscue there for Florida State, and the door stays open for Florida now with the bases loaded. Yeah, this needs to be thrown. You can see that Weisbrook looked like she was calling for it. You can see her say ball. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not sure what Michaela was thinking there. As Eccles is able to get back to the base. We well, always want to run the runner toward third base away from home, but that throw needs to be made a little bit earlier. And a pitching change as well here for Florida State. Back in a moment. Allison Royalty coming in in a bases loaded situation. The junior right handed pitcher. Opportunity for her to try to get the Knolls out of this jam. Bases loaded with one out. So she comes on to replace Mac Leonard. To face Pal Egan in the five spot in the batting order. Top half of the inning, Florida worked out of a bases loaded jam. And now it's Florida State's turn to try and do the same. One hit in the inning, an error, a free pass, a missed opportunity in a rundown on a fielder's choice. And the Gators may be one smash away from regaining the lead with Eccles at third. Reagan Walsh at second, and Emily Wilkie over at first. Royalty had an appearance in the Notre Dame series last weekend, a couple of scoreless innings against the Fighting Irish. She's gutsy to move the ball around. She's been working on her mechanics this year. Catches the inside corner. This, this is her 32nd inning of relief work. Built just the one out in the end, and the infield is in. Two and one. Royalty is the transfer from Arizona State. A couple of years in the desert. Pat Egan is the grad transfer from Texas A&M Corpus Christi who has emerged the second half of the season for the Gators. walk to bring a run in to tie the ball game. Really good at bat by Powell, not fishing. It's so easy in that situation with the bases loaded, your team down by a run to want to chase out of the zone, but she doesn't. That walk, that's as good as a hit in that situation, scoring a run for the Gators, tying it up. An error, a pass ball, a couple of walks, and a run. In, a couple of runs in. The bases remain loaded uh, for Sam Rowe, grounded out to third base in the second inning. Activity in the bullpen. That's Emma Wilson for the Seminoles. Oh. 
Outside corner, one and two. Royalty continuing to work that lower part of the zone. She can throw a rise ball, but a lot of drop and change up in this situation with runners on. Bases loaded. Oh, got her to swing out of the zone. And the strikeout, two down. Drop ball in the lower half. Looks like she maybe even takes a little bit off this pitch. A lot of dirty spin on it and just falls off the table. Gets Rowe to swing through it. That's a huge second out in this inning. And with two outs now, base is still loaded for Avery Gels. Through a walk, her first time up. I think the bottom of the order can get some production here for Florida. to retake the lead. Gell sends one the opposite way, and Mudge is there to make the catch. Side retired, but a couple in to even the score. And we'll chat with Tim Walton when we come back. To the top of the fourth in Gainesville, all even Florida and Florida State at three apiece as we are joined now by the head coach of the Gators, Tim Walton. Tim, uh, when we talked to you earlier this week, really looking forward to the opportunities ahead of you tonight and against Kentucky. What, what excites you about the way your team has responded so far this evening? Yeah, obviously uh, get the early run and uh, you know get going and then give up three spot. But no, I just, I like the way we, we really haven't, uh, we've been able to turn the page pretty quickly. You know, we, uh, we've, we haven't been overmatched too many times this year. I think we've got some young players playing and learning and getting a little bit better. But our reset button has been really good, and I think that's important in this game, being all about a game of adjustments. You've got to constantly make adjustments. I think we're doing a good job of that. Hey, Coach, it sounds like a silly question, but how important is Skylar Wallace to this team? Well, gosh, uh, you know, she obviously is our engine. She makes us go. She does a lot of great things. You know, she's done some really good job, uh, done a really good job uh, on defense, but really has had an outstanding here at shortstop for us. A lot of balls, you know, her way. But offensively, I mean, she just does so many things. She's a good two-strike hitter, steal bases, score, walk, uh, RBIs, home runs this year. Just uh, I, haven't, I haven't coached a player that can do so many things well. I've had a lot of players, been really, really good, but the, the, as many tools as she has and as sharp as so many of them are, uh, she, she's impressive. She's been pretty fun to watch. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Well, we appreciate yeah. it. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, you mentioned the crowd. It's a big one. Thank you. Go Gators. It is. Yep. Fabulous uh, night there in Gainesville. And uh, the folks have turned out to see the Sunshine Showdown and not disappointed by the drama thus far. Mm -mm. Florida jumped out 1-0 in the first, a three-run second inning for Florida State. And now the Gators responding in the bottom of the third with two of their own. So we are back to square as we head to the fourth. <laughs> Uh, the top of the order for the Seminoles. Well, I should have said to lunch. Coach, I, I, and Beth, I should have said to Coach, well, do you want to stay on headset and talk about Skylar Wallace for the rest <laughs> of the game? Because she's got so many tools, it would take maybe about three innings to <laughs> talk about just how good she is. <laughs> oh, fun to watch. Yeah. I, th I think it would be, um, you know, if, if you look at the numbers for SEC Player of the Year, they certainly favor Skylar. She's a Got a shot at the Triple Crown. If you're more inclined, best player on the best team. You know, Kiki Malloy is having a fabulous year for Tennessee. Can they close it out? Uh, they are uh, fighting Georgia this final weekend for uh, the regular season championship. Tennessee will be playing South Carolina. Georgia playing LSU. Ashley Rogers, who may be the most important player down the stretch. Mudge able to reach with the infield hit to open up the top half for the Knowles. Good job by Mudge to get this down. So much speed. She's basically just reading the defense, showing that Walsh is back, knows that Trilicek is going to have to go get that. Really good play by Riley Trilicek, just 
not quick enough because Mudge has all that speed. Base runner now for Janai Kerr. Janai's been on twice with a walk and then an RBI single. Ron, it is only fitting, Beth, you were talking about, you know, what Florida has coming up and as well as Tennessee, Georgia. It's been such a crazy year. The throw down and they get Mudge. Cheryl Longley on point. <laughs> Let's get back to being a crazy year, but this is why Sarah Longley is behind the dish. Tim Walton talked about the fact that, you know, offensively her numbers are down a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. It's this right here, ability to stand up and throw the ball down to Wallace. Gets Mudge, who does not get thrown out much at all. Excellent mechanics. It was the fourth time all season she's been yep. thrown out, and Kerr reaches out to get it for the base hit to left. But I feel like the, the craziness of the year, and, and here we are, the craziness of this inning, right? You get two hits back to back, but you're thrown out stealing, so it's, it's I just feel like it's been one of those years that it's hard to predict what's gonna happen, and there's a parity all the way around. It is fitting, it comes down to the final weekends of the ACC, the SEC. It'll be a fun postseason, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. So you've got Oklahoma has already won the Big 12, UCLA champions of the Pac-12, Northwestern winners of the Big 10, and then the ACC and SEC still undecided. Florida State's magic number is one. They host their challengers from Louisville. Florida is still in the mix, by the way. There are six teams still with a chance to grab a seed for the SEC tournament. There are two available because Tennessee and Georgia have already secured seeds. Uh, but the Gators, who are in eighth place, still have a shot at it. They need a lot. They need to sweep Kentucky, and they need a lot to, to happen ahead of them. But three games back with three to play. Foul ball. Hard hit off the bat of Harding. Oh, it just shows, again, that anybody can, you know, be anybody. And, and it's been hard to sweep, right? Uh, most of the conference matchups have have not been uh, sweeps. Someone's taken a game from you every weekend and just shows the, the level of competition that's out there. One, two to Harding. It would be the first time if the Gators can do it to get a sweep. They do not have one in regular season SEC play yet. Another two strike delivery from Trilicic doesn't get her to chase. The other question of course for the SEC year in and year out Smitty is how many get in? Does the committee favor the power leagues or do they lean towards parity? There could be several other conferences that can steal a couple of bids. Harding gets a hold of one, and back goes Gells to make the catch, two down. Hey, the NBA playoffs roll on tomorrow night, 9 Eastern on ESPN and the app. It's game two, Lakers and Warriors. LA taking game one on the road, dominating in the paint. And they have the series lead, game two, Thursday night on ESPN. Countdown crew coverage starts at 8 Eastern. Last year it was 12 teams from the SEC. Last two years, as a matter of fact, they have on three different occasions gotten every team in the league into the tournament. But the te teams like or conferences like the Sun Belt and the Mountain West and the A Sun and the American all may get multiple bids this year. Yeah, a lot of times it comes down to who's going to win that automatic qualifier. There's a good look at the SEC in the top 25. Yeah, all of them, by the way, are in the top 64 RPI. 
uh, which is usually a pretty good indicator. 0-2 to Edenfield. And off the ricochet long lead. And Kerr racing all the way around to third base. <laughs> How about Heads it? up, base running for Janai. <laughs> Love it. She sees that play in front of her and she's going to say, hey, I'm going to be greedy. I'm not just going to second. I'm going to go all the way to third. She sees that really high hop off the mask of Sarah Longley. Really good job of reading that and getting all the way to third. And Riley Trilicek focuses on the batter instead of the base runner and gets the strikeout to end the threat. Even at three, Gator fans on their feet as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Here's your weekend lineup coming up on ESPN Networks and ABC. NBA action Friday night and Saturday night. Then it's UFC Saturday late night, followed by some F1 Sunday afternoon from Miami, the Grand Prix on ABC, ESPN Plus, and ESPN Deportes. Those are just some of the games and events we have for you all weekend long. We've got a spectacular weekend of softball coverage for you that includes the Seminoles and Louisville in a fight for the ACC regular season championship, as well as Florida and Kentucky as they battle for a, a bye in the SEC tournament. And of course, uh, Smitty, you and I excited to be uh, heading to Stillwater for Bedlam, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, even though the Big 12 regular season is decided, you know, that's always fun when those two get together. Absolutely. The, Kenny the Gajewski's Oklahoma. Pokes uh, have a win over Oklahoma in each of the last two seasons. Yeah. The uh, Oklahoma version of this matchup right here. Yes. There's, there's of course, the uh, Sooners will be tough to beat. Winners of 38 in a row. Yeah, they've been uh, doing it all right in every facet of the game. Pitching, hitting, and defending. Number one in the country in all those categories. Allison Royalty facing 8-9 in the top. Sarah Longley struck out in the second, but that was against the starter, Mac Leonard. Creole is in for a strike. Longley taken all the way. foul territory and that one will find the ground. So even though they won the series against Ole Miss, they did drop a game to Ole Miss and they fell four spots in the RPI this week down to 21. They are 6 and 11 against RPI top 25 schools. So they would be on that Regional host bubble, the top 16 seeds get to stay at home. Longley snared by Harding at third, one down. Harley doing a good job of making sure she times this correctly. Getting up just at the right time. Sometimes when that ball is struck at you, it looks like it's coming harder than it is. It's easier to to jump too soon, more so than you think, but good job timing it. Looking at that line drive out for the first of the inning. There's Falby, singled, stole a base, scored on error. Of course, this year with Oklahoma likely to be the number one seed, a lot of teams may not want the number 16 seed. They may not even want the 15 seed because that probably means a date in the Super Regionals at UCLA, so. We saw last year, Smitty, Texas reached the 
championship series unseated. Yeah. Well, and that's a team that probably thought they should have been seated and, and weren't. Had yeah. A little bit of a chip <laughs> on their shoulder, went up to Washington and, you know, bounced them, went to Arkansas, bounced them. We had three unseated teams at the World Series last year. The mayhem lived up to the to the hype. There you see Friday night, the first of our uh, two games for you from Stillwater. We'll be there Saturday as well. And, and, yeah, and staying at home last year wasn't a huge advantage. There were five road teams that won in the regionals, five road teams that won in the super regionals last year. Yeah, and I attribute that to just the strength of these conferences. I mean, you are on the road playing what is essentially a super regional every weekend in the ACC or the, the SEC when you're going up against the other top programs. So it, it hardens you up. I mean, you look at Florida State's a perfect example. They go into Clemson and they sweep Clemson on the road. They have played every one of their toughest opponents this year on the road. 11 and one against the other four contenders in the ACC on the road. Of course, they were bounced last year as the two seed lost at home in the regionals. And a strikeout of Falby two down. The Gators were on the other side of that. They were upset winners on the road against Virginia Tech and the Supers. And they were the only SEC representative last year at the Women's College World Series the fewest since 2007. As we get ready for another look at Skylar Wallace in the leadoff spot, she's walked and struck out tonight. They'll continue to be well off the plate knowing that she's getting pitched inside. Gets a hold of that one, back it goes, and gone! Skyler Wallace, solo home run, and the Gators jump in front. And well, that's just textbook hitting, that is smart hitting. Skyler Wallace knowing exactly the pitch she's hunting, and she gets it. She sets herself up for success by being slightly off the plate, knowing that She's going to be thrown on that inner half. And take a look at where this pitch is and where Edenfield is starting to go. So this pitch is up, and it's supposed to be up more and out more. And she just gets all around this. Again, she's got power to all fields. But naturally, looking on that inner half, she just drives that ball out of the yard. 17th home run of the year for Skylar Wallace. And she's got the Gators on top. Last year, eight home runs. And this year now, up to 17 and counting. Carla Eccles steps in. Smitty, that was the perfect example of why Lonnie Alameda, who coached Jessica Mendoza as an assistant coach at Stanford, calls Skylar Wallace Mendoza-ish. Yes. Loves the rise ball and can rock it when she gets a good one. Yeah, even if it's out of the zone, you know, that pitch was, you would, you would think it's a ball and unhittable, but not to hitters like a Jessica Mendoza or Skylar Wallace that like to elevate that. So they actually take that ball from high to higher and just drive it out of the yard. Yes, of course, the Olympic uh, gold medalist one of your former teammates and our colleague here at ESPN. Eccles looking for her first hit of the night. But the first two runs for Florida came off of her bat with a ground out and an error. Both to second base. And she's on again. The 
can see that's the fourth free pass from Florida State pitchers. What's the count on the other side? Uh, five free passes tonight for Florida State. And more activity in the Seminole bullpen. Yeah, it has not been a good night to be in the circle. I mean, just control-wise, free passes not mounting. And a lot of them coming across the score. Reagan Walsh follows one on. Reagan walked the first time up. Some royalty. The second pitcher of the night for the Seminoles came on in the third. And the Skyler Wallace home run here in the fourth to give the Gators the lead back. Trying to even the Sunshine Showdown after Florida State won at home last Wednesday night. Swing and a miss there, one and two. There is your home run hitter. Walsh staying alive. Yeah, it's just been, you know, Beth, you look at your scorecard. I don't know about yours, but mine's really messy. <laughs> and, uh, Very messy. Yeah, um, you know, the Gators, two hits, five walks. Let's put four runs up on the board. Seven hits for Florida State. They've also left seven runners on base. Yeah, the Knolls had back-to-back -back innings where they left two on, and then they left the bases loaded in the third. We talk a lot about how it's the timely hitting, but uh, sometimes it's just taking advantage of your opponent's miscues or some gifts. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Skyler ducking for cover. <laughs> Gotta be careful in those dugouts. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's hugging the side of that dugout now. That's right. That's right. Staying out of the way. That is golfed. Foul. See all the kids running out <laughs> from behind the fence going to pick up a souvenir. That went a long way. Hope there wasn't an intramural soccer game going on out there. Heads up. <laughs> two two pitch. Just get into the netting. Keen had a good go at it. Home run for Wallace, and then the walk to Eccles. Uh, Charla over at first with two outs. Eccles is getting a workout over there. <laughs> Her lead off. <laughs>
Back up the middle, and another boot from Flaherty. That's a couple tonight at second base. Two on with two outs. Wow, that's uh, uncharacteristic. Usually Devin Flaherty is very steady Eddie up the middle, well positioned, but she's just not on time. That ball is through her legs while her glove is still coming down. You see the infield is a little bit chopped up as well, but that's still a ball that you need to at least keep in front of you and try to have that force play at second. Here's Emily Wilkie. And so for Florida State, two errors, five walks, two wild pitches, one passed ball. As a result, only two Florida hits, but they'll say thank you very much. We'll take it. Get a home run ball from Skylar Wallace. And looking to add to it. Flaherty, just six errors on the year coming into this game. Picking up her seventh and eighth of the year. Royalty a little frustrated not getting that call on the outer half. Both the pitchers have been wanting those uh, pitches on the outer half. Sometimes you don't get them. you got to figure out a different location to go to. count and that's the pitch that's important for Allison Royalty that's her changeup, and you can just tell she's holding on to that a little bit too long and therefore it's up in the zone and when she throws that pitch effectively lower in the zone it's just a way better pitch it's harder to see when it's elevated you can see it you can lay off it Come back into the ballpark. <laughs> Tyler Wallace is home run. The difference right now here in the bottom of the fourth. And a full count with two on for Emily Wilkie. This one will stay in play. Kerr has it over in left center, but Wallace with a good poke and a 4-3 Florida lead. Skylar Wallace, 17th home run of the year, showing why she is in the lead for that triple crown in the SEC. 17 home runs, matching her number, number 17. Play for the SEC, like one of the best conferences in the world. SEC is a great conference to be in. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced. One of the ways you win an SEC tournament title is by having an explosive offense. The best way to win is to not let the other team score. Get ready for every pitch of the SEC championship starting on May 9th in Fayetteville, Arkansas. All 12 games on SEC Network or ESPN, the championship, Saturday night on ESPN 2, 24 hours later. The selection show, a two-hour selection show and seven innings after party for you on May 14th, and let the mayhem begin. 
Oklahoma, your two-time defending national champs and the favorites to get a third unless somebody can derail the Sooner train. 4-3, our score here, Florida over Florida State as we head to the fifth. Skyler Wallace, a solo home run is the difference right now. Riley Trilicek to face five, six, and seven in the lineup. Riley on in relief of Lexi Delbray. Seven hits on the night for Florida State, but there's been some frustration. They've left too many on base. Hard hit, snag by Walsh over to first. One down. Really nice defensive play by Reagan Walsh going into that 3-4 hole. I mean, this is just really good positioning, timing, laying it out. Look at where she's going to start at. And it's basically hit so hard, it's one step and dive, and then no, she does not have time to stand to her feet, so a good job of throwing from her knees. And a bullet over to Wilkie at first. Great defensive play. Allie Waycaser next up. Walked and scored in the second, struck out looking in the third. And Waycaser with a base hit. Tying run aboard now for Florida State. Devin Flaherty singled and scored in the second, walked in the third. And a chance for Devin to make some amends after the error in the last inning. Filichick gets one at the knees, 0-1. Turns on it, fair ball. All the way back to the fence. And runners on second and third with one out here for the Seminoles. On the double for Flaherty, her second hit of the night, third time on base. Devin Flaherty just tattooing that ball, taking out uh, her error aggression on this blowing inside pitch. Just mashes that into the corner. That is this 90. Sixth double of the season, second in the country, this Florida State team is at hitting those doubles. So now the tying run at third and the go ahead at second. Bethany Keene is due up and there are not only a conference going on in the circle, but some movement around the dugout for the Seminoles, and they'll pass the bat off here to Katie Dack with home run power. The pinch hit here in the eighth spot. Katie Dack has been good this year. 319 average, 10 home runs on the year. She is due as well, just two for her last 20 at bats for the Knolls. Two for six this year is a pinch hitter, taking her hacks right away, 0-1. And I think if you're Florida, you also have to be seeing, looking, looking at uh, who's on deck. And right now it's Weisbrook. I wouldn't be giving Dak anything too good to hit. No. Thought they might save the pinch hitter for the next batter. Maybe they still will do that. 
Yeah, because when you look at situationals, you know, the batting average, runners at second and third with less than two outs. And that's a fair ball. Out into left field, and a pair of runs will score, and Florida State goes back on top as Dak does get something to work with, and she makes some pay. Well, and, and that's always the case, Beth. If you look at situational batting averages, second and third with less than two outs is typically far higher than bases loaded just because it's much more difficult to defend this, and this is just a high hopper, well-placed, gets over Eccles' head, hugs the line, stays fair. So Katie Dak. So even though she's been struggling a bit of late, uh, not the case against Florida. So Dak, who drove in a run last week, drives in two more here. And it is the Seminoles back in front. And here is Weisbrook in the nine spot in the order. Well, you made a good point, Smitty. I mean, you, you pitch to a 319 batter as opposed to trying to pitch around her and go after Weisberg, who's only been up a handful of times all year. Yeah, and, you know, so even if she is on base and the bases are loaded, it's, it's a still it's an easier situation to pitch out of. And no, it doesn't seem like it, because if you walk a batter, you're going to walk someone in. But if the statistics will tell you that batting averages are mm -hmm. far higher, second and third, with less than two outs than bases loaded. Boy, now the walk right there to the number nine hitter. Who was hitting 111 before this start tonight. We'll take a minute here to remind you that Sunday Night Baseball comes your way from Petco Park in San Diego. It's the Southern California affair. The Padres and the Dodgers. Sunday Night Baseball, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage gets underway with Countdown at 6. Also available on ESPN Deportes. Andre is a winner earlier tonight over the Reds. 7-1. to one. Of course, so that game on Sunday night uh, should be Featuring Fernando Tatis, who returned last week for the Padres from his suspension. 5-4, our score here. Florida State, the lead over Florida, and still threatening. One down, and back to the top of the lineup, Kelly Mudge. Has reached twice with a couple of singles, one of them driving in a run back in the second inning. Dak and Weisbrook aboard. Bailey has reached now 22 games in a row. Foul territory. Coming in with an eight game win streak is Florida State. And in this series, it's four in a row against Florida. Florida State's been really strong as of late. They were 16 and one in April. They've won 22 of their last 24. So they're just playing good softball. I mean, they've been a little sloppy defensively and then the circle a little bit tonight. Mudge puts it in play to short Wallace. The short way for an out, two down. And there will be runners on the corners as they get Weisbrook. Right 
And now the dangerous Janai Kerr, who has reached base all three times, a couple of singles, including one that drove in a run in that second inning. Goals come into this one. They are secure. I, I think uh, Smitty barring a total collapse of being a, a top five seed yeah. uh, again this year. I, I look at Oklahoma and UCLA and Florida State and Tennessee probably as the top four at this juncture. Slice the other way, and that is out of the reach of Avery Gell's overhead all the way to the wall, and Janai Kerr does it again. A two-run double to pad the lead. Again, this Florida State team doing what they do so well, and that's hitting the ball in the corners and in the gap. 97th double of the season for the Knowles, and you can just see pitch on the lower half. She just goes down and gets that. She's on time. Great extension, just driving that ball opposite way. It gets over Avery Gulls' glove. So going to score Katie Dack from second. Another big run up on the board. 11th double of the year for Kerr. So pitching change for Florida with the Knowles on top, seven to four. And we'll be back in a moment. And the third pitcher of the night for the Gators is Elizabeth Hightower, the senior righty from Monticello, Florida. Elizabeth Hightower with a lot of experience in the circle. Got a lot of change in velocity. She'll throw anywhere from the mid 50s to the mid 60s. She likes to throw that off speed. Got good break, good run on her pitches. You're going almost every direction. Only really the key is commanding the pitch and locating it on the corners and working from ahead. Hightower comes on with two outs here in the top of the fifth. Janai Kerr at second base and four runs across for the Seminoles to recapture the lead. Change in the outfield as Falby and Gells swap spots center and left. So Gells to center, Falby to left. After the Kerr two-run double sailed over Gell's head all the way back to the wall out in left field. Wing and the miss for Kaylee Harding, who's 0 for 3 tonight. Harding. Fair ball inside the bag. Kerr will score easily. And they have doubled up the Gators. Nope, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. Off speed pitch. Ooh. Wow. The initial bounce was inside the base. Well inside, yeah. Where it, where it goes over. Yeah, it's hard to tell where exactly it went over. Hightower likes to throw that screwball off-speed combination. Got her to pop it up. Ball be under it. Side retired. But a two-run single for Katie Dack, a two-run double for Janai Kerr. And Florida State is back on top. Well, for Lonnie Alameda and the Florida State Seminoles, another terrific campaign. They are uh, one win away from securing the ACC regular season championship. They can do it Friday against Louisville. Their uh, resume, as strong as it gets, 12 top 25 RPI wins, and they are a solid top eight seed for this year's NCAA tournament. 
Mac Leonard, who started out pitching tonight, is now in at first base. So that would uh, mean that Katie Dack would probably stay in the batting order in the eighth spot as the DP. And Allison Royalty back to work, and that hits Pal Egan. And our streak continues, Smitty, of zero, one, two, three innings tonight for either side. Just yes, pointing just, that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been I, a tough I'm on my night. second pencil here in my <laughs> scorebook. <laughs> exactly. One of those games. Uh, man. Some walks, some hit batters, some errors, uh, a lot of 3-2 counts, a lot of foul balls, stretching this one out a bit. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, up in a clean game for sure. Little small ball. Rowe able to move the runner over, one down. Well, they think, yeah, let's test that new first baseman right away. That's right. Avery Gells will come up. Florida with the 1 0 lead in the first, then Florida State 3 1 in the second. Florida tied it up in the third and then took the lead in the fourth, five to four, or excuse me, four to three, and now the four run top of the fifth for the Seminoles. And this is one thing about this uh, Gator team. They have had a lot of fight this year. If you go back and rewatch the uh, Tennessee Florida series, that was, I think that was more like a boxing match slug than a softball fest. game. It was a slugfest where punch, get punched back, punch, get punched back. And, uh, it, you know, it's one of the things that Tim Walton talked about is that, you know, he loves the fight in this team that he, they know they're, they know who they are. They, you know, they know that they're in some areas not going to be the, you know, the, the strongest in the country, but they've learned to play with what they have and be competitive. Different look than the, the Florida team we're used to in the past, but think back beginning of the year they were the preseason favorites in the SEC this season one two pitch goes lifts that to shallow left coming on his mudge two down and it's interesting because those preseason polls are picked by the coaches themselves and you think if anyone knows the teams and the strength of teams in the conferences it would be the, the coaches in the conference but it just just shows that you know things change and some players have good years and some have years that struggle with different things and I, I think you know this Florida team if they had a, a, a dominating ace in the circle they'd probably look a little bit different yeah, I don't think anybody foreshadowed the uh, the SEC ERA of 12 out of the 13. But, I mean, you think of all the great pitchers that Tim Walton and his mm -hmm. staff have put together here. You go back to Stacy Nelson and their first uh, deep forays into the NCAA tournament and the Women's College World Series. Steph Brombacher, Hannah Rogers, Delaney Gorley, Alicia Ocasio, of course, Lauren Hager. Yeah with those back-to-back -back champs, and then Kelly Barnhill in recent years. And this year, uh, not the numbers that they have been accustomed to, even though they're not bad by a lot of other people's standards. Well, and that's the other point that Coach Walton talked about, is that, you know, to Florida standards, <laughs> this year looks very different. But to a lot of other teams and program standards, they're like, oh, those are pretty good numbers. <laughs> so it's all... <laughs> It's all perspective. Are you all looking relative. up or down? Exactly. It's in for a strike to Longley. Sarah has struck out and lined out tonight.
Longley tattoos one. Back goes Mudge, and she'll watch it. Leave the yard. Home run, Gators. Wow. And they are back within one. Wow. And again, we talk about the, you know, the fight, the way this team has been resilient, even in the face of adversity, in the face of giving up a four spot the inning prior. What do they do? They get the leadoff on and then a big hit. Sarah Longley, we talked about how important she is behind the dish and a slightly above 200 average. Coach Walton is okay with that. And then comes up with a big hit. This two run shot, her sixth home run of the year, showing why she can swing it as well as throw it from behind the dish. Second home run of the night for Florida. And it's a 7-6 ball game. Oh, that's a 3-1 count. Now, if you really look at Florida State tonight, they have worked from behind. They've worked to full counts and three ball counts. That was the 11th three ball count of the night for Florida State pitchers. And it's just hard to be successful when you're, you're throwing in those situational numbers. That is the uh, 110th and 111th runs via the home run ball this year for Florida. So a third of their scoring. Good change up from Royalty. Three of their six runs tonight reached on a walk, an error, and a hit batter. One, two to Kendra Falby in the nine spot. Her first home run since March 29th was also the first hit of the night for Florida with a runner on base. Balby has Kanai backtracking, and she's got it. But Florida back within one after the home run ball. Sarah Longley taking a 3-1 pitch up in the zone and just sending it out of the yard. Her sixth home run of the year. She gets the Gators back to the hit one. Softball, we're so competitive. ACC really isn't going anywhere because we are already here. Another rocket, and that one's over the fence. We are just as competitive as any other conference. There will be teams from the ACC in the World Series. And we've got every pitch from South Bend for you, May 10th through the 13th with the championship on Saturday afternoon, 1 Eastern on ESPN2. All building towards the selection show, May 14th in prime time. Two hours of coverage for you as we reveal the bracket of 64 on the road to the Women's College World Series. And we got a good one. Tonight in Gainesville, 7-6, Florida State over Florida into the sixth inning now. Michaela Edenfield will lead things off. We're five and six for the Seminoles to face Elizabeth Hightower. Beth Mullins and two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith with you. And then it is off to Bedlam this weekend for Oklahoma, <laughs> Oklahoma State. And then we... Uh, We'll be in Arkansas for the SEC tournament this year. Arkansas starting to really play good down the road here. Took that series from Tennessee in that rubber match game on Monday night. Big for the Hogs. And that's a great environment. I mean, the crowds love softball there.
The other thing to keep an eye on this weekend um, and into these tournaments is you have to have a 500 record to be considered for an NCAA invitation. So teams like Michigan and Arizona State, former national champions, will be scratching for wins here down the stretch. Kansas, Georgia Tech, there are teams on that 500 bubble in the ACC and the Big 12. Three, two pitch. Oh, Littlefield draws the walk. I think that's the 11th combined free pass of the ball game. That screwball that Hightower throws. I, I would want that. That one looked good. Yeah. That one looked good. They're going to get a pinch runner out there for her at first base. She can re-enter. Maya Ross. And here's Mac Leonard. One for three tonight. Reagan Walsh robbed her of a base hit her last time up at second base. Runner goes, and Ross is safe. Wallace thought the tag was in time on the throwdown from Longley. They've already thrown out Mudge tonight. Maya Ross has not been thrown out this year. She is 17 for 17 and stolen bases. There, Longley, really strong arm, well placed. Looks like the tag yeah, the, maybe a little high. Yeah, foot was in, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, her foot's in. There will be a review here, and because it's uh, not a conference game, they don't have the SEC review center back in uh, Birmingham, so it'll be done on site. Ball on the field was safe. I don't know if we've seen anything to change that. Yeah, I don't think so because the tag is applied up on the thigh, so it's a little bit yeah. high. Yep. I think that's a good call by the umpire there. And the call will stand. Ross, Ross now safe at second. 18. Yeah, 18 for 18 on stolen bases. One one to Leonard, and Ross will take third here. Or that one a wild pitch. Three and one. Well, we've seen a lot of these from both sides tonight where you get on with a walk, steal a base, a wild pitch gets you to third without a hit. You're in a position to score. Leonard golfs that out to center. Will it be deep enough? Falby comes over and plenty of speed from Ross to score on that. The sacrifice fly makes it 8-6. Maya Ross is such a weapon when she comes off the bench. Mm -hmm. and basically, it's a walk, a stolen base, ball gets away from the catcher, fly ball, score run. <laughs> 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 
Slow roller to second. Two down. Hey, the NBA playoffs are rolling on tomorrow night. 9 Eastern on ESPN and the app. It's game two after the Lakers beat the Warriors in San Francisco in the opener. They're back at it Thursday night, 9 Eastern on ESPN. Countdown crew coverage starts at 8 o'clock. Ron and Anthony Davis dominated inside in game one. And the ground out as Flaherty is retired, but a walk, a stolen base, a wild pitch gets Ross home on the Leonard sack fly. Back it goes and gone. Runs will score at Florida State. Goes back on top. A terrific uh, game tonight from Gainesville with Florida State leading Florida 8-6. to six. As we move to the bottom of the sixth inning, Janai Kerr having herself a night. Three for three with three runs batted in. And for the Gators, Wallace and Longley, your home run hitters. And uh, Wallace will lead things off against Royalty, who she hit the home run off of her last time up. Prize ball up in the zone and leaked back. Quite get out or up enough. See where they uh, tried to throw her. Wallace is even further off the plate now. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> it's across for a strike, one and one. She's just assuming they're going to throw her low and inside. And come back with that off speed pitch at 54 miles an hour. Two and one as we check out the home run swing. Goes up for the rise ball and gets on it. Pitch up at her shoulders and she just gets that barrel underneath the ball and takes it from high to higher and bashes it out of the yard. Just so relaxed, so composed up there at the plate. Coming off of last season where she had 50 walks, 50 stolen bases, 50 RBI. I don't think she wanted to walk for the second time tonight, Michelle. She <laughs> stays alive, <laughs> swinging a ball four there. Get another exactly. pitch. She has done a good job of walking this year. She uh, yeah. took her 40th walk this year, but you're right. I mean, if it's borderline, I think she's as good as she's swinging the bat. She's going <laughs> to she's gonna go get it. <laughs> Does get another pitch to look at. And back it goes and out. Second of the night for Skylar Wallace. How about Skylar Wallace? It's her 17th and 18th home run of the year. And that's the reason why you swing at a close 3-2 pitch. And look at the energy pumping up the crowd. Getting the Gators back to within one. 3-2 pitch, off speed. She's sitting and she just takes that ball the opposite way. And as we talked about her power, she can go to right, she can go to left, she can go to center. And she can also sit on an off speed and drive it out of the yard. 18th home run of the year for Skylar Wallace. On a three to pitch. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd give her anything in the same area code there <laughs> to swing at, but she gets one and she makes him pay. And it's back to a one run game. Well, and you know, Beth, she had a, a, a slug over a thousand coming into this game. She's, <laughs> <laughs> she, it's only going up from, <laughs> I mean, how do you raise a slug over a thousand? 
I think he could have hit a couple home runs in the game. <laughs> Fun to watch. Whoa, what a season for Skyler, and it continues. And here's Charlotte Eccles now. One swing away from tying it up. Has scored a run, has driven in a run. Been on base a couple times. Two and one. Hits her. And the tying run is aboard. The go ahead to the plate. It has been a free pass frenzy in this game for both sides. And we may it. We may have another pitching change here, let's see. With Reagan Walsh coming up and a chance to give the Gators the lead. And there were a couple of arms out in the bullpen. And it will be McKenna Reed coming on for the Seminoles when we come back. McKenna Reed will come on here, the freshman lefty from Portland, Oregon. With the tying run aboard, the go-ahead coming to the plate in the number three hitter, Reagan Walsh. McKenna Reed can throw with some great velocity. She's got that lefty spin, so she can run the ball through the zone. She'll go a little backdoor on curve, but it, she also has a very good rise ball that she'll throw at the upper part of the zone. 11-0 on the season, a sub-1 ERA. Typically will command her pitches, control the zone, work from ahead. She's been a major asset out of the bullpen for Lonnie Alameda this summer, excuse me, this season. So here comes Walsh. Over oh two with a walk. Gets on top of that. Mudge drifting over will call for it and make the catch one down. Skyler Wallace, a pair of home runs for the Gators. Florida has hit three tonight, trailing by one. They've got five outs to work with. On a Florida. wild night in Gainesville. <laughs> Beth, it has been wild. The Gators have just four hits, but three of them have been home runs. Yeah. They well, and the two sides, wow. Smitty, have combined with all the walks and the hit batters and the errors, 16 extra at-bats in the game tonight for both sides. Yeah. It's been tough. In for a strike, one and one. Looking to grab the lead here to put Florida State into its uh, last at bat in the seventh. The smoke from Reed. That rise ball at the top of the zone. She throws it with really good spin, great velocity. 30 second appearance. 30 of those relief. Got her first start against Clemson at Clemson. You got 
And a strikeout for Reed. Two down. Well, Reed with that velocity, just getting underneath the hands of Emily Wilkie. Wilkie holds her hands a little bit low. Take a look at the way she positions that bat. So she's somewhat, see how those hands are like at her cord or numbers and that rise ball is ending up above. And so you can just see slightly underneath that rise ball attacking her in the upper half of the zone. With a big strikeout, second out of the inning. Pal Egan. 0 for 1, she's walked and been hit by a pitch. First time around, of course, to see Reed. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That fan, by the way, is not in our booth. <laughs> I thought he was sitting next to you. Ben. He's right in the microphone. <laughs> Egan pops it up. They will leave the tying run on base as we head to the seventh. The Skyler Wallace continues to put on a show, Smitty. Skyler Wallace in the fourth, taking a rise ball out of the yard to right field for her 17th of the year. And then how about here in the bottom of the six, another shot, 18th of the year for Skyler Wallace, showing why she is up for USA Softball Player of the Year. Here's a look at your line score. Florida and Florida State, 8-7 Seminoles in a shootout tonight in Gainesville as we head to the seventh. Three home runs amongst those four hits for the Gators, two of them for Skyler Wallace. And for Florida State, a couple of big innings, three in the second and four in the fifth. Eight, nine, and the top due up to face Elizabeth Hightower. And here's Katie Dack, a two-run single as a pinch hitter in the second as she stays in the line, in the uh, fifth, rather, as she stays in the ball game. Looks like RBIs from five different players tonight for the Seminoles. Yeah, they've had a hit parade. 11 hits on the night, but they left eight runners. I tell her wants to keep this one tight. They have had a couple of walk-off wins the last couple of weeks. Including Reagan Walsh in the Ole Miss series last weekend. Good. You want the pressure cookers. You want the, the games that keep you on the edge of your seat. Maybe less free passes, but other than that, you like the close ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a call, strike three. One down. Great location by Elizabeth Hightower. Screwball underneath the hands of Katie Dack. There was that low at the knees. Now the number nine spot in the order. Place Brook. Brooke. 
Gators in the bottom half, six, seven, eight duo. Ball be on the run and foul territory's got it, two down. <laughs> she covers so much ground out there. <laughs> and she can dance a little bit. <laughs> and that'll bring up the top of the order in Kaylee Mudge. Has reached base three times, scored a run, drove in a run. <laughs> Florida six, seven, eight hitters that are due up. They are one for seven tonight. But that one was the Longley home run. That was not off of McKenna Reed, the most recent pitcher in the ball game for the Seminoles. Does Florida State go back to her or do they bring in Kat Sandercock uh, to try and close? I think they uh, to see the see the bullpen yeah. right now. Yeah. I don't know, that's a good question. Nobody like in the bullpen, them. we're told. Okay. And Falby climbs the ladder to get it. A first one, two, three inning of the night. And that sets it up for Florida as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Down a run and a chance to walk it off. Here's what you can look forward to on Saturday, the final weekend of the regular season. Tennessee trying to win the title for the first time since 2007. Georgia is the only team left that can block them. And there's your triple header starting at noon Eastern Saturday on SEC Network and streaming live on your app. Alabama, LSU, Florida, all amongst six teams that still have a chance at a top four seed and a bye into the SEC tournament, which will be at Arkansas in a couple weekends. Sam Rowe is set to lead things off. Six, seven, and eight due up, and here we go. Down a run, one to tie it, two to walk it off here in the bottom of the seventh against the freshman McKenna Reed for Florida State as the Seminoles try and sweep the season series against the Gators and win for a fifth straight time. In our matchup of former national champions tonight in Gainesville, Rowe is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. Avery Gells is 0 for 2 with a walk, and then Sarah Longley do up third, a two-run home run tonight. Her first in over a month. Some smoke from Reed, who is trying to secure her fifth save of the season. Just a terrific atmosphere tonight at KSP Stadium. The SEC leading the way in attendance again this year. Alabama number one in the country. I think it's seven of the top ten in attendance nationwide in the southeast. They love their softball. One, two pitch. No chase from Rowe. Good take by Rowe. 
Been a heavy dose of, doses of pitches. That rise ball at the top of the zone. Fighting spirit from Sam Rowe. On a night of uh, some missed opportunities for both sides, a combined 15 left on base. Leaders looking for the clutch hits here late. Florida's done a good job of working Seminole pitchers. 155th pitch coming. From no pitchers. Row the opposite way, and that'll drop in for a base hit. And the tying run is aboard for Florida, the winner to the plate. Hey, and that's all you can ask for. Late in the game, fouling off pitches, working hard just to get something out there, get on base. A lot of fight in those Gator bats. In recent weeks, Emily Wilkie, a walk-off grand slam to beat South Florida. Reagan Walsh, a home run to beat Ole Miss just last weekend. Opportunity knocking again. Here's Avery Gels. Excuse me, Katie Kissler is the pinch hitter here. And looking to lay down a bunt to move the runner over. it up 0-2 and, and a missed opportunity to move the tying run into scoring position. Well, it's interesting, you know, potentially giving up an out here to move your runner into scoring position because if you can just get one more on base, Wallace potentially comes up yes. again. Yep. So you got to be careful here where you're giving away outs. She is now due up fourth. And for Katie Kissler, her first pinch hit opportunity of the year. One, two from Reed. Out to right, Waycaser's got it. One down. Sarah Longley, then Kendra Falby. And if need be, Skyler Wallace. One of the front runners for National Player of the Year honors. Can they get to her? Will they need to get to her? Longley, a two-run home run, back in the fifth. That was off of a different pitcher, not Reed. Wallace confident that she can get back up. <laughs> the gloves getting ready. ready. That's right. That's in for a strike. One and one. Good drama in Gainesville tonight. Mm -hmm. Heat up high, one and two. Nice location of that pitch. Upper 60s on that one from Reed. And now the pitchers count.
Longley on the season against lefties is four of 16 with a couple of home run balls. Two and two. Rally caps, rally cleats, rally towels. <laughs> just put all, just put rally. all the catcher's gear on. Exactly. <laughs> rally catcher's gear. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Get it done. This would be big, big for the Florida resume. Swing and a miss. Two down. Big strikeout for McKenna Reed. McKenna Reed working a lot of rise ball up at Longley. Showing it middle, showing it in, and then she comes to this outer corner. Just expands the zone. You can see the fire Reed saying right here, right now. So now you've got the speed of Kendra Falby in the nine spot in the order. And Skylar Wallace hoping that she'll get a shot. She is on deck with two outs. And well in the pinch runner, the tying run at first base. Balby's the kind of hitter that can put some pressure on a defense with her quicks down the line. One for three with a single back in the third. Yeah, if you're Falby in this situation, you are just thinking about reaching, figuring out a way to reach, expand this game, Pass that bat to Skylar Wallace. Who would likely be walked after a couple of home runs in her last two at-bats. But we didn't think they would throw her a pitch at 3-2 the last time she was up either. <laughs> That would pass the bat to Sharla Eccles. Falby, base hit, and Wallace will get to the plate. Tying run at second, and the game winner at first. For one of the hottest bats in the country, and now what does Florida State do with her? Now oh, this will be interesting. Eccles is 0 for 2 with two walks. What does Smitty do with her? I think in this situation, yeah, you walk her. You put her on. Make Eccles beat you. Yep. One thing this does too is it'll put the obviously second runner into scoring position with the bases loaded. So Eccles more than likely just a base hit. Eccles does have a couple of home runs with nine runs batted in in her last six games. She had a pop out and a sack fly for an RBI in last week's game against Reed in Tallahassee. And Sharla Eccles will come up with the bases loaded, down a run with two outs. Hope nobody left early. We're missing it if they did. 
She is a put the ball in play kind of bat. She's only struck out six times all season. Already has an RBI back in the first inning. First pitch swinging, pops it up in foul territory, and Florida State will win it. Florida loads the bases with a chance to walk it off, and McKenna Reed induces the pop-up, and the Seminoles sweep the two games this year against the Gators. Wow, what a battle. Great job by McKenna Reed to get out of that really good first pitch to Sharla Eccles, but hats off to Florida. Never out of the game, no matter what Florida State did, that four spot in the fifth that didn't phase them. They kept coming back, kept fighting. Wow. And the Florida State Seminoles pick up the win on the road in dramatic fashion tonight in Gainesville. For our entire crew and Michelle Smith, I'm Beth Mowens. Have a great one. Bedlam coming up this weekend.